Hi and welcome into the Kitchen Sink podcast where we talk about everything but the kitchen sink. God, I look like I'm going to a fucking funeral. Um, hello. Welcome into episode 15. Um, I'm not going to lie, this episode is probably going to be a little bit different. Um, might not be the bantering fun time that you're used to just because I've like this one's going to be like me actually saying some shit, do you know what I mean? Like, I've, I'm here and, like, the, the topics I've got to kind of hit on are not the most fun. Um, so I understand if you came for a fun time, you might not want to watch this one, but um, this this episode's quite important for me personally. Like, this is kind of just going to be me speaking into a void. Void by Melanie Martinez, absolutely. Um, but just me speaking into a void, um, kind of just a stream of consciousness because I've got things I want to say, I don't know if they'll come out right, um, but I kind of want to get some shit off my chest. So this is just going to be me speaking some truths, um, coming clean about a few things, telling you about my insecurities, what I've been dealing with. Yeah, I don't really know. Um, I'm not. I'm also not sure how long this episode's going to be. Like, this could easily be an hour. This could be like twenty minutes. So I've got no idea. But whatever it is, um, this is the only time I've got to do this episode. So this is going to be the one for this week. So whatever it is, I'm sorry. Um, but hopefully, you're going to come along for the ride. Um, I will just preface this by saying, like, try not to be judgmental. I I might say some shit wrong. Um, or like put things in a weird way, whatever. Um, and if you've got questions on anything that I hit on in this episode, then feel free, talk to me in the comments. Um, kindly ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in this episode, I kind of want to talk about, I mean, first of all, what I post, because it's been like a big thing at the minute. Um, the past few days, it's been like an, a very much internal debate about the stuff that I post on Instagram in relation to obviously YouTube and stuff. And I understand that like a lot of the people that I'm speaking to, maybe that are listening to this, um, are not are not the audience or the people specifically that I'm like hitting on. Do you know what I mean? So this is why I'm kind of saying like, this is going to be me just kind of speaking into a void. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just getting something straight and like me kind of setting some boundaries, right? So um, the past few days, I've kind of been struggling a lot with what I post how and it, and not necessarily what I post, but like the perception of what I post and my morals and intentions kind of getting clouded a little bit, it seems anyway. Um, so I kind of just wanted to come on here, chat about it. Um, it, it just seemed to be like the easiest form of me doing so because obviously like this is generally just my space to come and just chat about whatever I feel like, right? Um, so I'm sorry that this one's going to be a bit more serious, but anyway, um, I guess let's get into the episode. I've got a lot of stuff written down, so we're just going to go in chronological order and see where it takes us, okay? So I suppose I should probably tell you kind of what's been going on the past few days. So essentially, I posted on my story about three days ago now, I think. I posted on my story, like, recommendations because I want to get, like, I've got, um... I, I've got a Superman outfit kind of thing that I bought for Halloween and I just think they're fucking sick and, and I mean like they're sexy. So I wanted to um I wanted some recommendations on which ones you guys um or like the people on my Instagram um thought would be a cool one to get next. I'm wanting to get a few more because I think they're just fun. Not for like cosplay reasons, that's not really my shush, but I just think they're they're fun to have, you know what I mean? Um so I, I put like a question and answer thing on my Instagram asking just like for recommendations on some products. Um, and a load of people gave me nice, nice like responses and recommendations of like superheroes, whatever, like suits that they think would be cool. Um, so that was great. And I'll read specifically the one that's kind of like spurred all this on because don't get me wrong, like this, 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 
one this one thing specifically is not necessarily the problem. It's just like been like a growing issue that it's kind of it's kind of a, a, a big issue in the gay community anyway for kind of everybody. Um, but I've just noticed kind of like an influx recently on maybe it's not even an influx. Maybe I've just noticed it more and it's kind of getting to me more. But I think that's it's it's related to a load of other issues that I've been kind of dealing with or gripes that I have with like certain communities and stuff. So um, let me just quickly load up what the person said. Um, and I will warn you if you're under 18, maybe don't watch this episode. Um, just because like, it's going to be pretty filthy, some of the language used. So let me find it. Okay, so um, the person replied to my question and answer thing and wrote, try my insides. As in like, fuck me, not wear my insides, you know? I'm tight and great at head. So as you can see, that is extremely inappropriate. And that's kind of what's been not pissing me off so much. It's more like irritating me and aggravating me. I know they're kind of similar similar words, but still. Um, so of course, that's completely inappropriate by anyone's standards, especially when the question and answer thing was nothing related to that or sexual in nature at all. Um, so obviously I then, I then put that on my story and just said, I would love to know how some of you guys think that, think that this shit is at all appropriate. Right. So that was like the first little catalyst. Um, and the reason why I decided to post that was because just recently and like, I suppose as my, as my like social media presence has kind of grown, um, it seems as though people think that it's totally fine to just message creators or people with a certain amount of followers, whatever, I don't know. But essentially people that wouldn't necessarily see your message otherwise. I mean, like it kind of goes into the message request and you kind of have to look through them, right? And I, and I think more recently it's, it, there's been like an influx of people just replying to anything and everything with the most foul comments, which I mean, the, I'll, I'll get this out of the way, right? I do post provocative stuff on Instagram. I'm going to get into why and kind of why I use that kind of outlet and how it kind of helps me. So we'll get into that in a bit because there's quite a lot to that and it kind of goes back into like how I've grown up and stuff. So yeah, first and foremost, I, I'm totally aware that what I, what I post is definitely on the provocative side, right? So I'm not naive enough to think like, I'm posting a picture of my face and people are saying all this dirty shit. Like, no, I understand that the stuff that I post is gonna warrant a certain response. What irritates me is like, I wouldn't dream, regardless of who it is, I wouldn't dream of messaging people some of the shit that I've received from like posting, in my opinion, artful imagery, right? Because realistically, and I'm not saying it's, it's okay in regards to anything, but like the way I see what I post, like I understand, yes, it's provocative, right? Sexual, whatever. But that's mainly because I love like homoerotic art, right? And like the art that I view and enjoy like my Pinterest is full of like thing like a vibe that almost teeters the line. Do you know what I mean? But it's done in a very tasteful manner. Um and that's just that's just the stuff that interests me. That's the way I want to portray my body online, on Instagram specifically. Um and just kind of emulate that kind of vibe. Like voyeurism is is really cool to me also. So yeah, so that's I I completely understand the vibe of my Instagram is provocative and obviously it's not always going to be taken the right way, right? So I wanted to get that out of the way. Um, the reason why I find this an issue is just because like, feel free, compliment someone. Compliment, sure. I can take compliments. This is not me saying that. It, it's, it's getting to the point though where like, I'll post what I post. And realistically, I don't post these things for anybody else. Like, yes, it's great. Validation's great. We're human beings. We all want validation right? So I'm not saying that like I don't post it for validation because realistically we're all posting online for some sort of validation, whether that be likes or ac even just acknowledgement, right? So I, I, I'm, I'll be the first one to say, yes, I want a bit of validation. I think being single and five years single and like not the, not loads of friends and abundance of friends, like I think it's 
normal to say that like, yeah, maybe I want a bit of validation. I think that's fine, right? On whatever level that is. But for the most part, when I post certain pictures, like I see it once again as art and a way of demonstrating my body and my sexuality in a beautiful way. Like I don't see it as innately sexual in, in like a very like degrading way. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it's just the word that came to mind. Like, I don't necessarily see it as filthy. And I think the thing that's kind of saddening me and the stuff that's kind of getting to me more and more is it just like, it just seems that anything I post, if it's remotely erotic or erotica in any way, whether it be artful or not, which I mean, like I've said, most of the time I try and, uh, and I try and create art with my body and visuals. Um, it's, it's often just completely misconstrued as me asking for filth and like disgusting messages, whatnot, um, and comments. So like after I put that on my story, um, obviously I had loads of people like agreeing with me, like, cause I mean, like I said, it's a pretty, pretty small number of people I'm sure that, um, do this kind of thing, but it's, it's still, it's still frustrating. So I had a, a load of people obviously agreeing with me, whatever. And then I essentially had someone reply in my DMs and I'll put put the thing on the screen. And I'm not, I can't be asked finding the message specifically, but I'll just say like kind of a synopsis of what, what it was saying was that I was asking for it, right? And this this is the, the main gripe that I have, right? Fair enough, whatever, say shit, whatever, I can get over it. It's just the odd times it gets a bit overwhelming, like it gets a bit much, right? But for the most part, I can ignore it. It is what it is, right? So that's kind of what ha what spurred this all on. The main issue that I have is this whole narrative that just because someone decides to demonstrate a more provocative style in in like using their body and stuff online that suddenly shamed and well not necessarily shamed lo looked at from a strictly sexual lens like the art is kind of dismissed even though like there's so much erotica that like is beautiful and so, like some of the best artworks are like people naked um, it's like the the human body for some reason is more and more just like being seen as this sexual thing and like realistically we're all born naked not to quote Ru RuPaul but it's so true like we're all born naked we all have the same parts or similar parts or whatever and obviously an array but still like as bodies are as bodies like I just feel like people should be able to demonstrate what they're proud of or a moment that they feel confident without it being com like completely misconstrued in such a sexual manner to the point where people are just like, oh yeah, fuck me, like pound my, like, no. Like I don't post stuff for you to then message me saying like, you want me to do all this stuff to you, whatever. That's not the goal. And like, also my my other thing is like, what do you expect to gain from these kind of messages? Like, do you think I'm going to reply and like entertain it? Because if you, if you know me on here and you follow me on here, you'll know like my personality is not really that kind of vibe. Like I've, I've been single for five years. I'm not the most sexual being in real life. Like people are able to portray themselves very differently online to what they actually are in real life. Do you know what I mean? And not not that I'm saying being sexual in real life is a, is a problem. I'm definitely not saying that. We've all had our moments, right? But I just think it's 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 a hard pill to swallow when people perceive you as such a sexual being and it's constantly shoved down your throat when all you're wanting to do is create art with your body or what you perceive as being art. And I understand people perceive art very differently. So that's that's just a given, right? Now everyone's going to get the exact same as you. But hopefully you can just kind of see how that can maybe be a little bit um, frustrating after a while. And I kind of thought I'd take this opportunity just to, just to kind of like set boundaries for anyone that is watching this that maybe has like thought about or have done like sent sent me those kind of DMs or comment comments whatever, um just trying to set a bit set a few boundaries like like I've said happy to receive compliments, but there's a way of complimenting someone without telling them to drill your hole right that kind of vibe it's just it's just a little bit icky to me and I'm sure there's people that would be receptive to it and people that don't mind it 
I'm just the kind of person that doesn't. And it, and it kind of got to the point where this is why it's kind of come to a head is that every time I'd like go on my comments or whatever, or go on my DMs, it was like ber- beratement of that kind of language. And it gets, it makes me, it makes you feel a bit grotty. Like I, I posted a picture and like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like it was probably one of my most provocative images, which is now archived. Um, but it was based off of this shoot that I'd saw on Pinterest and I just thought it was so fucking cool. Um, and like the way it was received in the comments was just like a bit too much. Like I understood that people were obviously going to take it a certain way because I mean, I knew what I knew, like the, the image was pretty explicit. Um, but like it kind of got to the point where I was just like, every comment is just like, hyper hyper fetishizing and sexualizing and all this stuff and it was just a bit like i i don't even want to look at it like i didn't i didn't really care that the post was doing well i didn't really care that people were receiving it it just got a bit icky so i just decided to archive it um because like every time i'd go on it i'd just feel a bit like a bit gross because my thought was like what if my potential husband god knows when like goes onto my page sees that and then sees how these people are like receiving it and then instantly kind of like judges me for it. Does that make sense? Like, I know that maybe isn't how it'd work, but in my mind it was just like, is this person going to see all these comments and think that that was my intention when realistically it wasn't like, I don't be wrong with that post as well. Like I had a load of people being like, this is so artistic and beautiful. Like I get, I, I understand your aesthetic because that's what it is. Like that's, that's kind of my aesthetic and that's what I'm passionate about. And that's what I think is really nice. And I've been, and I've been kind of like doing this aesthetic somewhat like for like years and years and years in variations. Right. Um, so yeah, it's not to say that like everybody was being foul. It's just like, it was just like a lot, (laughs) but yeah. So then I obviously got this message from someone saying that essentially that I, I put myself up for it and deserve this kind of commentary because of what I post. And it kind of just get got me thinking about like how as gays, we're almost like we're going, me and my friend have spoke about this before, and I'm not sure if this imagery is going to come across if you, especially if you're just listening, but like, we're kind of like, we, we started from like a point of like disrespect, whatever. And it's like, we're going so far the other way. So like woke culture and all that stuff, like it's all, it's all going so well. And like, there's a load of acceptance in the way of acceptance anyway, to the point where like, we're almost circling back around now. And we're, and we're almost thinking about, we're thinking the same way as like how some disgusting men think about women. Like I had so many people messaging me because then I also put his response on my story, just being like, what did I write? I need to, I need to see what I wrote because that's exactly how I felt. So yeah, so the guy put, well, you are pretty much naked most of the time on here and on Twitter. So you kind of invite these kind of messages, right? So then I then wrote, what someone posts doesn't give them the right to berate them with sexual commentary and essentially harassment, right? And then I had so many people reply being like, this is literally giving the girl deserved to be raped because she was wearing a short skirt or she was walking, walking home alone at night. I mean, that's the kind of commentary that that was giving. And it's crazy to me that like, we live, we're in a minority, we're gay people. We, we, we exist within a minority and we're, and we're treating each other the same way another minority is treated. And and we're the first to be like, that's so disgusting. Do you know what I mean? And, And I know it's obviously different because I'm not a woman, whatever, but it's just such a similar vibe that like people are not allowed to show off any sort of skin or body within the gay community without being labeled an over-sexualized version of yourself. And that's, that goes for the gay community in general. Like the community is so over-sexualized and like filthy, which is not always a bad thing. I'm, I'm the first to say like, I'm very sex positive all the way. Love it. Go for it. Be a sexual being. Love that. But it's just like, understand someone's intentions. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, maybe if I post on Instagram of me literally in a thong spreading my cheeks, then yeah, maybe I'm like wa- warranting that kind of response and maybe I'd be open to it more. Maybe. And just because I choose to to show skin on Instagram or whatever else... Like I don't, I don't think that necessarily warrants um, a, a, a pretty foul response, to be honest. 
especially when especially when we've never spoken before. Do you know what I mean? Like when it's like I just can't imagine myself posting like sending Harry Styles like a disgusting message like that. Just because like if if he saw it, it'd be like, "Oh." And then on top of that, obviously the guy that um sent the question and answer thing in saw that I'd put it on his my, on my story and then replied with, "Oh, sorry, I was just trying to hype you up." Uh, and my question is, how is that hyping me up? And this is what I think is like maybe where I'm missing something because I don't understand how telling someone that you want them to do the to do like these hypersexual things to you, even though they don't even know you. Um, I don't understand how that's necessarily hyping someone up. Like I think that's pretty gross, personally. So yeah, and then obviously like a load of people agreed with me, and like a load of people do understand, uh, do like see w what I'm going for. Like I had a lovely conversation with a guy that I followed for a while who does like similar vibes to me, like very homoerotic stuff um, in a very artistic sort of way. Um, and we had a very interesting conversation last night, just kind of like going back and forth about the situation and how we're kind of seeing the gay community. And, and a lot of it does tie into real life stuff that I've been struggling with. So like my, the reason for this podcast was not necessarily just to go in on that situation because there's a lot of other stuff to do with the community that I, I'm kind of like confused about or not, not necessarily that I see a problem with, but like there's a lot of things changing and it, it, it it's becoming such a vapid space where no one really wants connection. No one really wants communication. No one wants to know somebody and actually know the person like, straight away it's down to sexual stuff do you know what I mean like I can't count the amount of times I've tried to start a conversation with someone be it on any app um and it's straight away just sexual 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 and I just think for me personally like I'm only speaking about my my experience and what I'm looking for in life I strive for more than just sex because realistically sex is easy to have right we can all have sex. It's not hard to find, especially not in the gay community. There's fucking grinder, right? So if, if I wanted sex, I'd, I'd know where to go and get it. But for me personally, like, that's not enough. Like I don't, I, like sex is great. <laughs> okay. Like I said, very sex positive. But at the end of the day, like for me, sex only goes so far. And like, like sex is like a transference of energy. Do you know what I mean? Between the two people. So like, I look for more than just hookups and random shags. What's the point in doing something when like afterwards you just kind of feel the same after? And it's just like, you're not building anything together. Like there's no passion there. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, what's the point? And I'm not saying there's not, there's, there might not be passion in your hookup. Like maybe you're great at that and maybe you live. Um, so if you love hookups, don't let me stop you. But I'm just, I've always been like more of a relationship inclined person. Um, and it just seems like more and more it's becoming harder and harder to try and find a relationship within the gay community um, without it, like I said, straight away becoming sexual. But yeah, so I, I don't really know. I don't really know where I was going with all that, but it's just been like kind of a realization that anything that I put out is probably going to be misconstrued in a certain way. And if people see you as attractive, then they do feel obliged or like you you should be grateful to receive whatever kind of commentary they throw your way. Um, and that's kind of how it's been feeling more recently. And then on top of that, obviously, with just the lack of connection within the gay community, it's just been a bit it's just been a bit where where are we going and what are we doing? Because at the end of the day, like I want to be able to build a life, get a husband, have some kids. Like I want to spend my life with someone. Do you know what I mean? And I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. I know people look for different things, but that's just personally me and my tea. And I kind of wanted to make that clear on here. Um, and yeah, I don't really know what I've said there or if any of it was legible, but yeah. So I post what I post, but then I kind of want to speak about why I post what I post. Um, and like I've kind of hit on, a lot of it is to do with like me capturing a moment where I feel sexy or I feel confident or whatever. 
Like I'm I'm a big fan of like underwear and lingerie, that kind of thing. It's so it's so sexy and cool to me. Like, and that's why I want to post in it because that's when I feel most sexy. I think I think a good pair of underwear, whatever, can really change things. And I'll say this now: this is where we're getting a bit deep. Like this is kind of leaning more into my insecurities and like my life. Um, so prepare yourself. But like a lot of it is to do with the fact that like realistically, growing up, I've not I've not always loved myself very much, right? Um, I've not I've not really thought highly of myself for the most part. And and I and I think since my last relationship, which was five years ago, um, I've been doing a lot of work into loving myself more, getting to grips with who I am, what I stand for, what I want to put out, and where my confidence lies. Um, and I've done a load of work on that. And I think the more that's happened, the more I've like really saw, saw a vision of what I want to portray online, be it provocative, okay? So like, I won't lie, when I was young, I pfft, thought I was an ugly fucking bastard. And I mean, still now, I struggle a lot with it. Like, I struggle a lot with body image. I struggle a lot with perfectionism. I guess, I guess the biggest two are probably body dysmorphia and, like, a negative self-talk. Like, they're, they're, they're real, they're real pre prevalent in my day-to-day -day life. Like, body dysmorphia, like, there'll be one day that I literally feel like the fattest slob alive and then there's other times where I feel really secure in my body and like I, I think I look great right so and I'm not saying either of those things are bad or whatever like people's bodies are beautiful regardless it's just the way my mind kind of like portrays certain things about myself like I'm so negative about myself sometimes but yeah I'm the most that like, I'm the first person to lift anybody up so it's so fucking funny how that works. So growing up, um, I really hated myself, actually. And I think being told from a young age that you're different and that you're not like everybody else and you're you're an outcast and there's all these things wrong with you, be it like internal, external, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it didn't do it didn't do well for me. And that's not even just like. It, like how I look either like it's literally it goes into every facet of my life like when I speak about perfectionism and like that kind of thing like for, for for the most part of my life like I've held myself to such a higher standard that's almost unattainable whereas to like anything I do never really feels like I'm, I'm doing enough and this kind of goes more into like I said like career and whatever like school all that sort of thing like even with this channel like I, I pump out so much content and like I never actually feel like I'm doing enough. Like I always feel like I should be working and I've I've hit on this before that I have a real tough time with management of like personal time and work time. And I think it's just because like obviously this has grown to a great spot and I and I love you guys a lot. Like you guys mean a lot to me. Um and obviously like I wouldn't change what I do for the world. Like I, I like I'm really so grateful. But it's like that comes with so much other stuff, especially with the line line of YouTube that I'm in. It's like obviously because I do these commentaries reactions, like there's there's always more that you can be doing and there's always more that you can be reacting to. So it's like one day I'll obviously put up a video and then I get people then being like in those comments straight away, like, we want this from you next. And it, and and I've always thought like, and I've said this to my friend a few times. Like, I've given you this. Can we not just enjoy this for a sec and then we'll move on to the next thing? Especially when it's like, I do put a lot of effort into my stuff that I put out and I know, like, this might sound so super wanky and I'm so sorry, so please try and take this as meant. But it's just like, I put a load of work into something, several days, working towards something, trying to make something as entertaining as possible. And then it's just like, straight away, because of how the internet is, that's not enough anymore like that all that work that you've done is now not enough we've, we've experienced that for the first two minutes and now we want the next thing and it's just like a constant cycle when you're already telling yourself that you're not doing enough and that people expect more of you for them people to almost be confirming that so then it's just, it's just like i just feel like i'm always behind does that make sense and i think that's almost normal because i mean i am young like young people like pfft, we've got it hard even though some people think I'm like 30 into my 30s. I'm actually 24. Um, so yeah, I just think as, as young people, we're, all, we're, we're expected a lot of. And I'm not, I'm not 
I'm not good. I'm not good at all that. I'm not good at telling myself, nah, you're doing enough. Like I, I'll, I'll be mean to myself otherwise. So yeah, I'm not sure where that really went, but like that kind of feeds into the whole like why I post what I post because when I when I feel my most my most confident, like I want to create something out of it. Like it hel it helps me like capture that moment and try and see myself in such a positive light. Do you know, does that make sense? And so yeah, so that kind of feeds into that. I don't really think that makes sense, but whatever. And then and then like on top of that. Obviously, like, I, I I, mean, I've been pretty open with this, I feel like, online, whatever, I don't know. Um, I mean, I've got psoriasis, so that's great. That, see, that's a big struggle for me currently. It's just, like, I've I've still not got to the point where I feel confident not, not editing my psoriasis out of pictures. I'll be completely transparent, right? I'm not about to sit here and say that, like, what I post isn't edited at all. Absolutely not. Like, there's some days that my psoriasis is, like, pretty clear, um, obviously, I've got cream and stuff for it. Like, I'm going to try and get to a dermatologist and properly sort it out because it's been like years of me on the same cream and it's just not working. Um, so, like, there's there is there's days where my psoriasis is real bad. There's days where it's clearer if I remember to put cream on and all this stuff. Um, so, like, whenever I come to take pictures and like, even though I feel confident or like I'm wearing something that makes me feel confident, my skin's telling a completely different story. And then because I see psoriasis as such a negative thing, which kind of ties to my last relationship because in that relationship um that was when my psoriasis started and he got with me when i was clear of psoriasis and then i got strep throat during that relationship and then psoriasis started um and it's like a, a an interesting type of psoriasis it's not like just like the, the standard stuff it's like a unique type um so then because obviously like my body and skin was changing during that relationship and obviously someone had got with me and found me attractive before that obviously I saw this change as such a negative thing because obviously like I was like, oh, well now he's got to deal with this and it's not the most attractive thing to look at. So I, I, I saw my psoriasis as a, as a very unattractive thing from the get-go. Um, So yeah, so then now it's just like, if I want to post something revealing and own my body, it's like I've then got that also to tackle with. So I tend to just edit that out. So I'll be completely transparent about that. On top of that, stretch marks. Now... I've come a long way with them because I used like a few years ago, maybe two, three years ago, because I've, I've fluctuated with weight quite a bit um, between like uni and like the first two years out of uni. I fluctuated a, I fluctuated a lot in weight, um, which obviously caused stretch marks. And once again, didn't see them as a very positive thing, which realistically, it's just a sign that your body's growing and you're healthy, right? Um, and yeah, so I, I I didn't see them as a very positive thing. Saw them very negatively and wanted to hide them. Um, but I'd say within the, like the last year, year and a half, I've kind of like grown to not love them, but accept them for what they are. Um, which is not always easy because there's still some days where I'm like, ugh, not my vibe. Um, but yeah, so I struggle with that. So so a lot of my like posting with skin is like. A lot of it's to do with me trying to accept my body for what it is. Like I said, obviously, I know, like, the psoriasis, I edit that out. I'm working on it. But, like, stretch marks and stuff, I show them all the time. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, for me, a lot of it is tied to just acceptance of my body. And I think, like I said, it's, it's just kind of sad when you're posting something to try and show yourself in a confident way, prove to yourself that you can be confident and that you, you like whatever like in your body try and accept things about your body that maybe you don't internally and then it's taken a completely complete wrong way does that make sense and obviously without explicitly saying it online like i'm doing now like people aren't going to know that so it's not it, this is not me like bashing people for perceiving it the wrong way like it is what it is um but it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't get grating at times does that make sense and I guess that's it, to be honest. This has definitely not been the longest episode. And I'm, like I said, I'm sorry, but I feel like if this episode was any was any longer, then um, it might just get a bit too depressing. So I don't think there's anything else really that I struggle with that I feel like I need to be honest about because realistically, I've kind of just said it all. Now you know all my insecurities. Now you know what I struggle with. And I mean, actually, no, last thing, just a sense of loneliness, to be honest, and like, I think it's seen as very cool to have a massive large friend group and 
know loads of people and this that and even have and have a major crazy social life and like that's that's another thing like i like i'm so comfortable on my own like so comfortable like i love i love being on my own not in like a recluse way i think since i came out of my last relationship and like growing to be accepting of myself more i think the more and more i accept myself for who I am the more and more I'm just like you know what me and myself we're chill together we'll have a great time and it is what it is so it's just like this this whole societal standard of like having a crazy social life and constantly doing things to me it's just so not appealing like I'd love to have more friends but I also I almost think that that's maybe why I got into YouTube and like put so much into YouTube because essentially like this is me trying to connect to people Yes, I know it's very, it's virtual and online, but for the, still, like, I feel like I'm, like, talking to you guys. Um, so I think that also feeds into just, like, my online presence in general. But yeah, and I think loneliness is a, it, loneliness is a difficult thing. And, and especially in the line of work what, that I do, where, where, like, obviously you work for yourself and, like, everything's virtual. Like, I don't sit in an office. I don't... I don't engage with people. And I, and that also probably does feed into the, the fact that I'm single. Like, where am I going to find people? Does that make sense? And then I think that's why I almost like I struggle more with online perception because I'm not, I'm like, if I speak to someone online, that's me trying to connect to someone because realistically, like I have no other format to, to connect other than going to a coffee shop. But then that's, that's also like weird sometimes. Like people don't necessarily want to go to a coffee shop and chat to a brand new person every day. Do you know I mean, I, I'm also socially anxious, so that's also not going to be good for me. Um, so it's just like when I post online and when I speak to someone online, like I want to communicate, I want to talk, I want to have a conversation. And then that obviously probably ties to why, why, um, why when I get these explicit messages, it's just like, oh, for God's sake, really? Again, you know? I think it all kind of plays a part and maybe it's a more of a me problem, but um, yeah. So I think all in all, let's try and end this on more of a positive note because I do I do see this being a pretty depressing episode. I just think be mindful of what what you message someone or what you send to someone because like it, all, it even goes to like, not just like text, like the amount of dis, like dirty, dirty, filthy images that I get sent on, on a day-to-day -day basis is fucking wild. Right, and I'm not. I'm not shaming nobody for sending nudes. I've sent them myself. Not. I mean, don't get me wrong. Not out of the blue to someone. Like I, I need to know someone first. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't just stop at text. It's like images also. I think all in all, just be mindful of what what you put out there, what you send to someone. Understand maybe their intentions behind what they're posting, whether it, like they're asking for that kind of interaction. And I mean, try and communicate and connect, please. Because I think I think some people really need it. Me, yeah, definitely me. Um, and on like a deep level, like I want a conversation. This is why it was so nice to speak this, speak to this boy last night because it was actually a, a deep and intellectual conversation. And it was so nice to have a deep and intellectual conversation with a gay man that I followed for a while that does a similar vibe to me, which is pretty homoerotic, not afraid to show some skin. Like he said to me, like himself, like he's a very sexual being, but it's channeled in a in a very specific way it was just so nice to hear from someone else that's similar to me in that kind of sense and that like i'm not the only person that just like struggles with a, a, the perception of them versus who they actually are as a person right so this this podcast is here for those of you that actually wanted to know who i am and this is who i am i'm pretty sexual but not all the time um and i'd prefer t for us to talk and at least say hi before telling me to penetrate your bits. And I'm sorry this, if this was depressing, but yeah, this is another episode down the drain and I will see you next week with something more positive. And I hope this made sense. Bye.